Ladies and gentlemen, we have now come to the first session of the day. I would like to invite the moderator, Ms. Sugandhi Subramaniam, Director of Strategy and Program Management, MIM, and the speakers and panelists, Dr. Hazima Zainuddin and Dr. Marcella Lucas, to take their seats to the front. Good morning and a warm welcome from all of us at the Malaysian Institute of Management. First and foremost, I would like to thank you for taking the time uh, off of your busy schedules and you know, coming over here physically. And those of you who are joining us online, thank you very much. Uh, for all the women who are here, all of us are really happy that we get to say advance happy International Women's Day. And to all the men who are here face to face, you're very brave. Thank you. <laughs> And for all the men who are joining us virtually uh, as well, the, you know, the same goes to you. But thank you so much for your continuous support. Uh, we do appreciate it. Now, International Women's Day's theme for 2023, uh, which is embracing equity, really uh, highlights the campaign that they are doing towards ensuring that people understand equal opportunity is just not enough. We have to do more than just giving equal opportunity. Now, I um, personally aspire for a world that has DNA equity built in every individual so that we're not just talking about awareness anymore, but really truly taking an action around developing that environment for all, uh, you know, even if whether it's gender or a dis a neutral gender. So I just like you all to know that, you know, I. This is more than, equity is more than just a gender issue, yeah? So I am totally privileged, amazed with these two ladies that I'm, I have uh, with me and moderating. I'm not sure I'm uh, equipped, knowledgeable enough to be with them, but I'm going to do my best. Um, really because if you look at their profiles, I was, you know, I was looking at it and thinking, my God, the kind of positions they hold they, con they held, will surely have a story to tell you of the challenges and barriers that they have come across. So I'm sure you're going to get huge amount of nuggets to take away from their experiences. I am privileged and I'm going to start off by doing um, not enough justice for their profile because I'm interested in hear giving you all as much time with them to hear them uh, as well. So starting off with Dato Hazima, she is the founder and managing director of Hyrex Oils Sandrian Berhad. Now, I have a sentiment for the oil and gas industry because I come from there as well. So I can imagine what your journey must have been. Um, the others, of course, she's got just a whole lot of accolades. She's the chairperson of uh, Matrid. She's also in the board for the Malaysian Palm Oil, uh, uh, Palm oil Organization. Uh, she's uh, part of the board uh, of trustees for the National Welfare Foundation. Uh, she has just won a huge amount of awards from 20, 2002 to 2018. So ladies, you're in good hands. Now I'm going to move on to Dr. Marcella. She's a friend. I've known her for a, a while now. We both uh, are passionate about women empowerment. Uh, she's an innovation strategist. She's been trained and certified in Blue Ocean Strategy. Uh, she actually joined us in Malaysia in 2014 to do uh, work on the national transformation uh, you know, agenda by the government. Uh, she was the CEO of the Lead Woman. She's now a founder and of her own company uh, doing consulting. So, you know, I, I want to leave you with this. Um, Marcella is I've worked with her alongside with her in the Malaysian Women uh, in Energy uh, uh, team, and she's very passionate. She does not let um, challenges and barriers, in whether it's in power structures or whether it is in a debate, she's not going to back off. <laughs> so you're going to have uh, interesting conversations with her. So with that, I'm going to quickly pass it over to Dato uh, Hazima to do her presentation, and then we'll take it forward from there. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Very good morning to all, virtually and physically here. And thank you to Dr. Uh, I mean, Madam Rahima Ibrahim, to MIM for having me here. I am so sorry that I have to rush off after this. 
um, due to time um, um, constraint, I'm going to share with you 32 years of experience in 10 minutes. <laughs> Um, yeah, um, maybe I can start off um, my, my presentation with a corporate video of Hyrex. At least you all know what Hyrex is all about. Yeah. Thank you. Malaysia in the 21st century is a portrait of progress. It is apparent from the constantly changing cityscape to the millions of people who represent an innovative and skillful workforce. These are millions who work in every type of business and industry. We are clearly a nation rich in human capital, with a landscape rich in natural resources. Indeed, oil and gas is at the heart of Malaysia's rapid development as an economy and society. Today, we are a major oil producing country, home to many manufacturers of quality petroleum products. One of these homegrown companies is Hyrax Oil. Incorporated in 1991, Hyrax Oil is at the leading edge of innovation for petroleum products. We are a global player in the development, manufacture, and distribution of lubricants, transformer oils, and other derivatives with presence in over 35 countries across four continents. Hyrex Oil is helmed by its founder and group managing director, Dato Azima Zainuddin, whose leadership qualities and entrepreneurial skills has won her many prestigious entrepreneurial awards. As a leading businesswoman, locally and globally, and for her outstanding achievements, Dato Azima was bestowed the award of Dato an honorific title given to individuals by a Malaysian head of state to recognize her service and contribution to the nation. Harex Oil is one of the leading Malaysian brands for petroleum products. We are known in the market for our quality lubricants and other petroleum derivatives as well as outstanding services. Currently, our range of petroleum derivatives includes oil and fluids for the automotive and marine industries, and industrial and energy sectors. Today, we are the single largest producer of transformer oil in Southeast Asia, with a dominant 95% share of the market in Malaysia. In this business, the most important factors are expertise and experience. At Hyrax Oil, we invest heavily in our people so that we can harness and leverage on their knowledge and skill sets. Our expertise and experience in tribology ensure we consistently develop and produce high-quality, high-performance products. At Hyrax Oil, we have a dedicated R&D unit at our manufacturing facility for this very purpose. The research we do allows us to cater to the ever-changing demands of industry and the market environment. With these insights, we are then better placed to improve on our chemical formulation, to develop more innovative products suited to meet our clients' current as well as future needs. To complement our R&D efforts, we also adhere to good manufacturing practices. According to IPQC and the Japanese 5S TPM, apart from Malaysia, our manufacturing capability and capacity is expanding to other countries such as Sri Lanka, South Africa and Qatar. On top of that, we also focus on ensuring smooth operations in all other aspects of our business, from the reliability of supply to the efficiency of our logistics for delivery of products on time. Our relentless commitment to the delivery of quality in everything we do has been repeatedly recognized by both the public and private sectors. These are among the factors why we are now recognized as a world-class producer of petroleum products. Hyrax Oil is also involved in motorsports, which gives us the platform to hone our technical expertise in lubricant oil technology. 
whilst we have achieved success, we always remember our responsibility to society. The impressive growth of Hyrex Oil, which also benefited our partners, is a result of us embarking on the following strategic initiatives. Inculcating a culture of quality and excellence, identifying, developing and maintaining niche products, and serving the national interests of the countries where we have our presence. Oil. Better oil, better care. Made in Malaysia for the world. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for watching my corporate video, which I brought with me whenever I travel. Because, uh, or else people will ask me what is Hyrex Oil all about. So, showing the video makes them understand. And um, maybe they have, the men will have some respect in a woman who can do this kind of thing. And they keep on asking me, like, Really, you know, why are you do, why are you doing this? Why not you're in a in a cosmetic business or in uh, cooking oil or you know all those kind of things? Like I I got it all the time, so I know how to tell them that you know women can be in men's world, men can be in women's world. So I I share with them like like the famous shoemaker Jimmy Choo is also doing women's shoes, and then the famous chef Chef Wan is also cooking. Women supposed to cook for the husband, so. Now our husband also cook for the women. Yeah, just let me show you the first slide. Um, if I can have my first slide, please. Is it on? Actually, just to share with you, there are about 6.23 million women, uh, or 55.1% uh, women that make up to the total Malaysian workforce. I got this statistic from um, Malaysia Women of Steel Tribe and uh, in a men's world. And 7% of women in the workforce involve male-dominated industries such as oil and gas, mining, engineering, construction, and transport. Um, out of these numbers, women in male-dominated um, industries, I'm probably, I think, I'm the only one uh, ventured into transformer oil and um, um, manufacturing lubricants, uh, all types of lubricants. Uh, let me share with you my journey of uh, how I... I, I go through persevere to 32 years in this business. It started off with, um, yes, okay. okay, why is it like that? Never mind, I, I have my notes here. <coughs> yeah, yeah, it started off with me um, uh, being with my ex-husband in Kelantan. I have to quit my job just to be with him and I was like, you know, I need to do something which is close to my heart, what I'm passionate of doing. So I was a car racer before. Could you believe it? Yeah, it was but many, many years ago, like half a, um, you know, like two decades away, three decades away maybe, I was um, doing that kind of business. Passionate about. So I, I started to sell spare parts of um, I can speed on, not on the highway, at the racetrack. Yeah, so, yeah, so I, I wanted to do something like that, of that, of that na nature. So along the way comes lubricant. Lubricant comes like um, part of the product that I'm, I, I marketed all over uh, Kelantan. And then I, all over the world, so I uh, got a Korean partner who supplied me with the lubricants and I marketed it in Malaysia. And the support was uh, the, the support from the clients was very good. The customers really liked the quality and things like that. So we decided to build a plant uh, in um, uh, in 1991 with the Korean as my partner, holding 30% shares, and I hold 70% shares. Five years is a transfer of technology arrangement. Five years later, they move out. So I, I got um, PUNB to buy over the 30% shares, and and life goes on after that. It's not easy. It's not easy. Life, it is not just like a piece of uh, what people say that to go to, 
to go to, um, yeah. Um, so the, the, if you ask me who are my competitors, they are all the big boys. They are Shell, they are Chevron, BP, Kestrel, um, uh, Fuchs, Petronas. So do I treat them? And Hira is very small. We are very, very little. Uh, I'm not small in size, but I am company small compared to the big boys. Um, but I, didn't, I, I will not treat them as my competitor. Never, never treat them as my competitor. We are not even in their league, you know. So, so I always treat them like my big brothers. In, you know, I always get help from them. I, I, I meet them once in a while. I got my base oil from Shell, uh, uh, US. They trained me into Transformer Oil, so that's how Transformer Oil came into the picture. And then I, I market Transformer Oil into uh, Tanaga National, Malaysia Transformer Manufacturers, EWT, uh, EP Wilson, and also exported to so many countries abroad. So I, I don't like to depend uh, on domestic. I, to me, I need to go abroad because um, the market in Malaysia is too saturated. Um, so many players doing it, and I, and I, I'm not big enough to do retail because I don't have money to spend on advertising and promotion. So that's how I move on, move on with the product by, by going abroad. Yeah, the challenges that I have to face, people look at me and like uh, skeptical. The ministries when I went there to ask for licensing and things like that. They, you, what what lubric? What, what oil are you talking about? Uh, you know, what is it? Uh, cooking oil? Is it? Uh, those are the perception that people have in we women. So. You know, you have to walk straight, you have to walk tall and tell them, you know, I am doing uh, engine oil and transformer oil. And they keep on asking me, what is engine oil? What is transformer oil? I have explained to them. So, you know, you must know your stuff well. You know, you must know your product well. Let them, let, let them um, think that um, this woman really know what, what she's talking about. So, um, the, the industries, the suppliers and CEO refuse to work with me in the, in the beginning. They don't even know, they don't even want to pronounce, they don't even know how to pronounce those Hyrex, they call it Hyrex, they call all sort of name. And, and they keep on saying that, you know, you, you are com competing with the big boys, how are you going to do it? So even the service providers having problem in giving me uh, credit terms, all cash on delivery and things like that. So to build the confidence in them, you really need to be strong, really need to persevere the hardship. Um, many a times that I have to leave the um, meeting uh, or leave the appointment without meeting the person I wanted to meet because they feel that I'm too small for them. And, but I never give up. I keep on going and going and going. I export to Africa, my, um, to eight countries in Africa. Uh, it's not easy, Africa. It, uh, they have these tribal issues where they have the change of chieftain every now and then. And then they um, like uh, decision making when they change uh, uh, the leaders or when they change the government, like Malaysia as well, they change the whole system. The, the president, the CEOs, and everybody change. And so it's not easy to penetrate into one country called Kenya. And I don't know whether you know about Africa, African countries. There's 54 countries in Africa. So when I went to Kenya, it took me about three years to up, going up and down, up and down. And on the third year, I, then only I managed to do it. So I've been exporting to Mozambique for the past uh, 14 years. Mozambique is like 26 hours flight from Malaysia to, to Dubai, uh, six, seven hours to Dubai, from Dubai to Johannesburg, from Johannesburg to Maputo, that is where the, the center of Mozambique, and they are, have, have been with me for, until now. They very good paymaster, very good, don't worry about them not being, everybody have perception of Africa is poor, they can't pay you, you know, they will owe you money and things like that, but don't be worried, because if you know your staff well, you have to really understudy them. You, you, you need to supply to the right people. So, so I'm supplying only to the national oil companies of various countries, yeah, all the countries basically. So um, yeah, I'm doing some contract manufacturing for Petronas as well, for Transformer Oil, hydraulic products. Uh, they got their, uh, to ProDua, to uh, Proton and things like whichever contract that they got, they outsource it to us. So if you go to my factory, there's a lot of dr drums of Petronas, Fuchs, and things like that. We do contract blending for them. Yeah, to go to all these countries, um, it, it, it cost me a lot of uh, penalties. Um, 
the eye started to uh, black ring and things like that. You know, you don't sleep on flights, and the minute you arrive, uh, the, those places you have to start working immediately and things like that. So going to 35 countries, no joke. Uh, but I cover, if I go to Africa, I cover a few countries in Africa. If I travel to, uh, uh, let's say, uh, Europe, I, I cover a few countries in Europe. So I need to use my time wisely. Yeah, so explore and take calculated risks and adapt to the new market environment. You have to understand individual countries' um, uh, history and geopolitics and uh, the economy uh, of the country and so that you will not get impacted by any issue that they face later on. So um, uh, tips for survival. Um, you have to be patient in whatever you're doing. Patient, sabar. Everyone was saying sabar. You know, you, that nothing comes easy. It doesn't come overnight. It took me a long time for us, for our product to be accepted by uh, the, the, the customers. And you have to persevere, go through hardship. Nothing comes easy. My, my God, if you look at me those days, my mom said that you're worse than an air stewardess. Go back home, change the bag the next day, travel again. So my mom is 90 years old, she's staying with me and she's worried at what you're doing, what are you looking for in life, you know, that kind of thing. So, yeah, but I said, you know, you know, the more I get, the more I can share with people, the more I can pay zakat, the more I can help my, my people in the factory. I have 200 of them uh, that are under, under my um, pay, 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 pay slip. And I, you must have a positive mind. Never think that, oh, I cannot do it. Mostly women, but what I understand, um, what my friends and, and, and peers, and they keep on saying that, I don't know whether I can do it. I offered a job to my uh, fellow, uh, one ex-accountant of mine. I offered her a higher position in the company after the children. She said she wants to resign because her children is growing up in school and things like that. So then when the children have gone to university, some of them are married, I offered her a job. And she said, can I do it? Can I do it? You are offering me such a big task. I keep on telling them, you know, you can do it if you say you can. Never say never. And you have to go hard work, go through hard work. Nothing comes easy and I have to go really fast. Do what you love and love what you do. That's the most important thing. Yeah, I, on my last slide, I think, um, yeah, you have, in conclusion, women need to be brave, you need to be skillful, you need to be adaptive to, man to maneuver the career of male-dominated industry. To me, everybody can do anything you want. And advocate the, uh, the equal opportunities for women in male-dominated industry. Do something different. Don't go, to, don't go around doing the same thing what, what women can do, like online uh, business and things. Too many people doing Tudong and people, Nyolofa is successful in Tudong, doesn't mean that we can be successful in Tudong. Find something you're passionate about, it will last. It will last. If you don't do something that you like, enjoy doing, it will not last. So promote policies and friend friendly to your staff in your, your workplace. All, most of my staff has been with me from the day one. For 32 years they have been with me. I see them grow from a uh, young man to, uh, uh, to, to a father, to, to, uh, to the husband, a, a, a father, and now having grandchildren in my company. So I have three generations working for me. The father, the grandfather, the father, and the daughter working for me. So you have to be nice to them, allow uh, to balance up their life. I hire a lot of women in my organization, and you have to address the gender bias and discrimination. This thing is not only in Malaysia, yeah? it's all over the world. Discrimination among uh, women and things like that. We, I feel that I feel that I'm a Malaysian, I'm proud to be Malaysian, and I don't really face the same problem with other countries of women. When I travel, some women told me about their his history, about what they have gone through in life and things like that, being harassed and things like that. I have not gone through that, alhamdulillah. I, 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 I have not been harassed, I have not been taken for a ride, I have not been... Uh, cheated or, or feel uh, people belittling me that um, I, I have not gone through that because as long as you bring yourself well, um, carry yourself well, know your product well, understand whatever you're, you're, you're doing is for, not just for the money but it's for the long term, long term arrangement. And then a career woman in Malaysia should seek out for mentorship. I believe in that because I always like to um, be a mentee to a mentor that I adore. And my, my mentor is always like Tan Sri Rafida Aziz. She's a really adorable woman, although she's very garang, but she's very good. 
when I travel with her quite a lot, but penetrated into so many countries following her mission. And um, she appointed me as a board member of Madrid. And 14 years after that, I'm the chairperson of Madrid. And I'm proud to say that we have a program under Madrid for women who wanted to export their product overseas. Yeah, increase in visibility and of a successful woman, successful woman in the uh, male-dominated industry and create network support groups and among the female employees. So you need to support each other, like what uh, Madam Rahima was saying, embrace, you have to embrace each other, help each other. So um, that's it, I am rushing. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I hope you will understand because um, when uh, during the briefing yesterday, I said, no, you only have 10 minutes. Now, I think I have overrun the time. So I have a lot to share, actually, a lot, a lot, a lot. Um, never um, uh, stop sharing. I've been sharing this all over the world. I, I am, uh, after winning the Ernst & Young Award in 2002, I traveled to the UK, I went to Monte Carlo, I went to so many places, sharing my experience, sharing my, my uh, hardship of uh, what I have to go through during these 32 years in business. So I really wish you all all the best. May uh, God bless all of you all and have a good session today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dato. That was very, very inspiring. And, um, you know, she has done such a good job summarizing, but I did want to highlight a couple of things. Um, you know, there's a beautiful phrase. I, I can't remember it uh, exactly, but what it says is, you fail not because you failed. You fail because you did not try. And I think uh, she's a walking, talking, uh, uh, you know, uh, example that we need to follow. So truly, uh, you know, if I have a, a message to send out there, do please uh, take the step forward to try and to test and to see where your competencies are and your specialties and strengths are, yeah? The other thing that she talked about very beautifully was she looked at the other uh, competitors as big brothers. You know, the mindset is a huge thing. You really have to have the right mindset. The moment you feel small, that's how you will behave. But if, if you stand tall, and she said stand tall, you know, walk with confidence, this is much needed to play in the playing field, right? And last but not least, this is, I'm huge on this, having the right content. Content is king. If you know the knowledge better than anyone else, you will be brought to the table, immaterial of what gender you are. Yeah. So thank you so much, Dato. We would like to uh, give you a, a, a small uh, appreciation and I'll pass it over to Rishi to do. Member of the Board of Directors of the Malaysian Institute of Management to present the token of appreciation to Dato Hazima Zainuddin. Thank you.